Good evening, uh, everybody, uh, dear professor. Uh, welcome um, on board the Media Medical Association uh, course. Today we have uh, our first eminent uh, lecture by Professor Dr. Samira Ansari, Professor of Anesthesia and Pain Medicine at the University, talking about some ICU. Health. You can go on, Professor uh, Samira. My pleasure to be with you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ram. Uh, <clears throat> good evening, our colleagues. Good evening, our attendees. Today, I am going to speak about uh, or discuss the hyponatremia, uh, presenting one case of hyponatremia. And as we know, there are many causes of hyponatremia we can face in our ICU. This patient is 39 years already, admitted to an exacerbation of her ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis. It takes brain as well as a cyoprene to, did, uh, to ameliorate the symptoms, but she is still hypotensive and tachycardic. Her blood results return as follow, and the junior medical registrar managing her as Siadish syndrome of inappropriate antibiotic hormone secretion. What you suggest from these lab results? Is this true? It is suffer she is suffering from Seattle syndrome. Urea 12.4, which is high. Creatinine is 100.4 micromole per liter, is still high. Sodium hyponatremic 120, potassium 3.4, hypokalemic. Chloride 92 millimole uh, per liter. CO2, which is a reflection of bicarb, 19 millimoles per liter. This meaning she is uh, acidotic. But if we can collect the anion gap in these patients, we will find it is not more than 10. So it is normal, normal anion gap, metabolic acidosis. So the urea is increased to some extent. There is metabolic acidosis, there is hypokalemia, there is hyponatremia. In addition, blood sugar is normal. Serum osmolarity, of course, is low, 266. And so this patient suffering from high, true hyponatremia. It is, the osmolarity is low, which is coincide with the low sodium. Urine osmolarity is 123 millismol per kilogram. This meaning the urine osmolarity is low. Urine sodium, four millimol per liter, which meaning the kidney try to preserve sodium because it is low in the blood. Calcium 2.15, uh, slightly increased. Magnesium 0.77, phosphate 0.94. Albumin is low, maybe from malnutrition and from ulcerative colitis. This patient is hypotensive, really. And the tachycardic, she is meaning he, she is hypovolemic. This patient suffering from ulcerative colitis, this is meaning suffering from diarrhea. And so this patient, I think, is going to lose too much sodium through her stools. So from there, and so she is suffering from non-ionizing gap metabolic acidosis, which is characteristic to the, this situation. And so it is not Seadish. In Seadish, we will find the plasma, the, uh, plasma osmolarity will be high in such patient, in patient uh, exist, uh, presenting with excessive antidiuretic hormone uh, secretions. And so we have to differentiate uh, between the other causes of hyponatremia. It is not Seadish syndrome. It is diagnosed wrongly and it is just uh, suffering from normal, uh, from uh, hyponatremia, which is common in such cases in cases of diarrhea. Uh, we start, they start to restate the patient because she is shocked, giving a fluid replacement over the next 48 hours, should correct her hyponatremia gently. And so in such situations also, you have to avoid rapid correction of sodium. Otherwise, the pure patient will complaining from uh, pontine myelinolysis, not only pontine myelinolysis, but myelinolysis all over the brain. In any area, in, in area of the brain, she can suffering from myelinolysis. It had, of course, acute ulcerative colitis exacerbation now by amino salicylate and hydrocortisone or prednisone plus as a cyprine to ameliorate the symptoms of such patients. Uh, here, this patient hemodynamic state suggests a volume deficit, as we said, 
uh, which when combined with hair biochemistry produces a hypovolemic hypo smaller hyponatremia, which is true hyponatremia. And as I said, kidney try to preserve sodium, and so we find we find sodium is very low in urine. This is not consistent with a picture of Siadish because <clears throat> the significant diarrhea leading to extra renal sodium loss. Uh, as I said, there is an additional normal, normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, not high anion gap. It is a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis in presence of hypokalemia consistent with gastrointestinal bicarbonate loss. Uh, diagnostic evaluation of such a patient, really, we have to go through uh, four steps. First step, consider whether the plasma osmolality may be actually normal or elevated. In such a patient, it is low, and so it is a true hyponatremia. Uh, if you want to know the sodium or the actual sodium in such patients, we have to uh, consider these equations. If the blood sugar is high, you have to multiply 2.4 by glucose milligram percent minus 100 over 100. Suppose that this patient suffering uh, has a high glucose level. Uh, suppose it is 500. You will extract 100 from 500, 400, and so multiply it by 2.4, give you the four uh, multiplied by 2.4, give you the actual sodium concentration. And our patient, he, she, is uh, uh, accepting the normal blood sugar level. And so the sodium, no need for correcting sodium. Uh, etiology were associated with normal or increased plasma osmolality. If you look to our your patient and you find them accepting normal or increased plasma osmolality, you, this is not true hyponatremia. And you, if, if the patient is suffering from elevated plasma osmolality, or it is hypertonic hyponatremia, uh, we can suspect this patient suffering from high, uh, accepting high blood sugar, hyperglycemia, maybe from mannitol administration, maybe from glycine administrations as in uh, situations of trans urethral prostate, uh, prostatectomy. Also, if you find the Z plasma osmolality is normal, this is pseudo hyponatremia. Uh, in such situations as hyperlipidemia or hyperproteinemia. And so, according to uh, many situations in the patients, you can differentiate the different types of hyponatremia. I will try to summarize here what is the difference between the Seattle syndrome and cerebral salt wasting syndrome, both of them causing hyponatremia. In Seattle syndrome, the antidiuretic hormone is increased, of course, and this will lead to volume expansion, the patient suffering from volume expansion. And if the volume expanded, of course, it will inhibit aldosterone secretions. And so the aldosterone efficacy or role will be abolished and the urine exempting high sodium the patient will lose too much sodium and retaining potassium because of inhibition of aldosterone. This is in Seattle syndrome, antidiuretic hormone increase, volume expansion, osmolality increase, serum osmolality increased in Seattle. In contrast to cerebral salt wasting syndrome, it is not so common as the Seattle syndrome, and it leads to sodium uh, level decrease in serum due to decreased sodium reabsorption in the renal tubules, and it will lead to volume depletion. And so, most of those patients may be suffering from a high potential to a slight extent, and they have appreciate antidiuretic hormone, but urine sodium is very high. And so the urinary, the urine osmolarity is high here in such situations. Uh, etiology by volume, of course, hyponatremia, we have to differentiate and asking ourselves if this patient is hypovolemic, euvolemic, or hypervolemic. And hypervolemia, such as cirrhosis, renal failure, heart failure, the patient is exhibiting hyponatremia. In patient with hypovolemia, such as patient taking diuretics or uh, suffering from diarrhea, as in our patient, or vomiting, all of those patients suffering from hyponatremia. If the patient is euvolemic, this is mostly seen in Seattle syndrome or reset 
hypostat, some patient exhibiting low, normal low sodium level, serum sodium level 132, 134, uh, and so the renal threshold for sodium execution is low. Some patients with hypothyroidism also existing hyponatremia, and they are euvolemic, and the cerebral salt wasting patient, most of them may be euvolemic or hypovolemic. Uh, step two, we have to check the urine osmolality and or urine specific graft. In hypotonic, uh, hypotonic hyponatremia, which is true hyponatremia, we have to look for urine Osmolality. If we see the osmolality of urine less than 100 milliosmol per kilogram, the, or urine specific gravity is less than 103 or 1003, this meaning the patient may be primary polydepsia, suffering from primary uh, polydepsia, like in, uh, we see these cases in psychogenic patients taking antidepression and antidepressant and so on, and they take excessive water and so this uh, mostly in psychiatric hospitals or patient taking too much beer and beer botomania or all the patient who suffering, uh, who stay alone in home and their feeding mainly depend on tea and the toast diet and they and they taking side there. Most of these old patients suffering from hyponatremia or maybe due to reset osmostat. And so in such situations, primary polydepsia, beer botonamia, or tea and the toast diet patients, uh, depending patients, or reset osmostat will find the urine osmolality less than 100 millismol per kilogram. And the specific gravity is low. If we find the urine osmolality is more than 100, your specific gravity more than 1003, we have to go through step three, which will differentiate according to volume status, the type of, and according to urine sodium content between different types or different causes of hyponatremia and will help us in differentiating and in treating such patients. Suppose your patient is hypovolemic and the urine sodium is less than 25, this patient may be dehydration from gastrointestinal or insensible loss as excessive sweating and some uh, in too hot atmosphere or too hot uh, attitude. Uh, or this, if the patient suffering for your, uh, from urine sodium excessive more than 400 milli equivalent per liter, this may be dehydration from diuretics, or maybe adrenal insuffic insufficiency, such as low aldosterone, and so sodium will be lost in the urine, and so urine sodium is high, and potassium is high in, in the serum. If your patient is euvolemic, you have to look to, uh, you will look if the urine sodium is less than 25, this patient may be primary polydepsia, so urine is diluted or beer botomania, or the patient, old patient, depending on tea and toast diet, not taking uh, ordinary diet. But if your patient is volemic and they have urine sodium more than 40, 80, you can start to think in Cialis syndrome, cerebral salt wasting syndrome, hypothyroidism, adrenal insufficiency. If your patient is hypervolemic and sodium, urine sodium is Less than 25 suspect in your patient may be heart failure or cirrhotic, but if the urine sodium is high, you can suspect advanced kidney failure or renal failure. And so the fraction and execution of sodium in renal failure, as you know, is high, and so urine sodium is high. And so from this table, you can quickly differentiate what is the cause of hyponatremia, which your patient suffering from it. Uh, step four also is consider the additional test which may help you in diagnosis and rapid diagnosis and in correcting the situations. If the serum uric acid is less than four milligram percent or blood urea nitrogen, blood urea nitrogen less than five milligram percent, you could suspect Serge syndrome or cerebral wasting syndrome. If the patient uh, exempting or suffering from metabolic alkalosis and hypokalemia, you can suspect this patient suffering from vomiting or from diuretics, uh, taking diuretics or from volume depletion, uh, volume depletion due to vomiting or diuretics. 
if your patient as in such in our examples or our case suffering from metabolic acidosis and hypokalemia you can suspect volume depletion due to diarrhea and sodium bicarb loss in the stools if your patient suffering from metabolic acidosis plus hyperkalemia you can suspect adrenal insufficiency and always try to exclude adrenal insufficiency in your patient in ICU patients who are suffering from hyponatremia. Uh, diagnostic evaluations also we have if you suspect the patient or you reach the diagnosis of Siadish in your patient is considered and most likely you have to seek for the underlying cause of Siadish syndrome because it, it always occur uh, consequent to other pathology in the patients. You have to uh, review the med medication list, maybe drug induced, maybe due to smoking uh, habits, or maybe the, uh, you have to ask for neurological and examine the patient neurologically, maybe due to stroke or some, some, uh, some neurological insult. You have to make a chest X-ray and even CT for uh, uh, seeking the underlying cause of Seattle syndrome. When you uh, decide on who you start to, to correct this, treat or manage these patients, don't exceed the sodium administrations more than six to seven or eight milli equivalent per liter over the first 24 hours. And if you suppose your patient coming with neurological symptom and it is urgent to correct sodium correctly, you can correct in uh, this, uh, this uh, amount in a short time, but the remaining 24 hours, you have to be free from injection of saline or sodium to avoid the bontine or myelination of the central nervous, central nervous system. And so in presence of severe neurological symptoms, increase sodium immediately in the first few hours till the symptoms improve, then hold for the remainder of the day. But in the total 24, 24 hours, don't exceed six to eight milli equivalent per, per liter and some others uh, mentions 0.5 milli equivalent per kilogram in the first 24 hours. Uh, also in the uh, 48 hours, don't exceed 18 or 16 milli equivalent of soil. Central bontine my, uh, myelin releases, which uh, manifested by several neurological symptoms, followed by mutism or dysarthria, spastic quadriparesis, pseudopalvar palsy. Really, we see many uh, signs and symptoms, different symptoms and signs in such situations. And it is not only or restricted to the bontine area. Really, it can affect any other area of the central nervous system. And there are some patients which are high risk patients for manifesting this problem, especially the malnourished patients, patient, uh, 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 alcoholic patients, patient with liver disease, elderly patient or elderly, elderly woman, hypokalemic patients, all these uh, patients can suffer quickly from pontine myelinolysis. Uh, treatment algorithm in, uh, in, in, uh, in other situation or in such a situation, suppose your patient is suffering from congestive heart failure or cirrhosis, of course, you have to uh, restrict the salt and the fluid. If your patient is suffering from Seattle, the first step or the early uh, uh, management is just fluid restriction. And to consider salt tablets if no uh, urgency, if you're in osmolarity more than 500, consider diuretics, of course. Consider high bartonic saline if the patient is suffering from severe neurological uh, signs and symptoms. Uh, if your patient suffering from reset osmostat and the hypo hyponatremia due to reset osmostat, as I told some patient to normally accepting low sodium level in serum, maybe 130, 132 only, no treatment in such situations. In patients suffering from hyponatremia uh, due to any volume depletions, you have to give normal saline. If your patient suffering from some depression or psychological state and suffering from hyponatremia due to polydipsia, of course, you have to normalize the fluid intake and give saline. This is the only treatment in such situations. Uh, and the early uh, line of treatment, as I said, in 
cases of hyponatremia, you have to restrict the flow of fluid. The restrictions is very important. And do not mean the fluid restrictions is, is to stop all fluids, otherwise you will jeopardize you, the kidney patient, the patient the kidney. You have just to reduce the intake 500 cc per day below the average daily intake. Uh, or just to give the 50 to 75% of daily fluid requirements. This is, meaning, this is the meaning of restrictions. And don't exceed the restriction, otherwise you will complicate your patient with renal problems. Uh, there are some notes which I want to stress in cases of sodium metabolism. Sodium disorders always suspect there is water disorder. So uh, sodium is the surrogate for water in our responsible for keeping the tonosity of our plasma. Uh, always le uh, look for the type of sodium changes. It is acute or chronic and it's very important. And I, as I said, when you correct it, don't correct rapidly, correct it gradually. Don't exceed 0.5 milli equivalent. Uh, don't exceed, sorry, 6 to 8 uh, milli equivalent per, uh, for the first day. Uh, urine sodium also is a surrogate for aldosterone efficacy. If you see urine uh, sodium excessive in the urine, this meaning aldosterone is deficit. If urine sodium is less than 20, this is meaning aldosterone working well in your patient. Uh, urine is molality is the surrogate for Cialis. Always in Cialis, we see high urine is molality. Urine sodium more than 20, meaning aldosterone not working due to high volume inhibit aldosterone secretion in Cialis. And so in Cialis, we can see more sodium in the urine of the patients. And so high urine osmolality is a reflection of or a surrogate of a high antidiuretic hormone or Cialis syndrome. In hyponatremia, three, uh, there are three categories which are, we have to differentiate. The hypervolemic, euvolemic, and hypovolemic patients before diagnosing Cialis, you have to exclude Addison's disease, hypothyroidism, renal tubular acidosis type four, uh, urine osmolality, meaning always antidiuretic hormone is secreted and aldosterone is off. Aldosterone is reflecting the sodium retention and the potassium excretion. This is the, the action of aldosterone, the sodium retention and the potassium excretions. Of course, we know the uh, antidiuretic hormone secreted through two mechanisms, the osmotic chains or osmoreceptors when it is increased or the baroreceptors which the patient suffering from hypovolemia, baroreceptors stimulated and so stimulate the antidiuretic hormone release through the cellist mechanism, through stimulation of the supraoptic and the, uh, paraventricular nuclei. And always remember this patient who is staying in the desert and suffering from dehydration and plasma osmolality is high, is mainly regulated by antidiuretic hormone secretions in the serum. Hyponatremia, acute treatment to goal to uh, take two factors into account. We consider two factors when we start to manage our patients suffering from hyponatremia, when we correct the hyponatremia the cerebral edema and the non-electrolyte smalls or <coughs> idiogenic smalls, which are highly concentrated in the brain. And so we try to prevent the progression of neurological dysfunction, prevent respiratory arrest and relief symptoms, avoid excessive correction to prevent osmotic demyelination. So two important points to be considered during the management, cerebral edema and the non-electrolyte smalls. When you, I think in general, when you manage any patient with a changing in his osmolality due to many uh, factors other than, even other than sodium. 
Hyponatremia using the hypertonic sodium chloride, we have to calculate the deficit sodium, how much sodium deficit is, and always the target sodium which we can reach to it is 120. Mostly the patient to not suffering from neurological complications is uh, except if under 120. And so the target sodium typically 120 milli equivalent per liter. And so the equations is very simple. We have many equations, of course, but the most common is we have to multiply 0.5 or 0.6 in times in the body weight. And the, uh, accordingly, we uh, calculate the uh, how much of 3% sodium chloride or hypertonic sodium chloride could be given to such patients. And so uh, better to make repeated uh, lab investigations to follow up the treatment. If your patient suffering so from severe neurological symptoms and you need rapid correction, we can use V2 receptors antagonists as Vaptans, as Conivaptan or uh, Starvaptan or Tolivaptan uh, or Lexivaptan. Many, many Vaptans are uh, available now, both oral and IV, or you can use urea, but urea is not, uh, test is very bad and so the patient are not tolerating it. But they can give rapid uh, treatment for such situation. For such uh, these are uh, there are many formula for calculating how much sodium you need, and I think this is the most simple one. Sodium required total body weight timing the uh, actual uh, the desired sodium minus the actual sodium, and then you can calculate the volume of hypertonic saline, which contains 513 millimole per liter or 0.5 millimole per one ml. And you can, if you sodium required how much divided by 513, you give you how much melts from hypertonic saline you can give to your patient or correct your patient. Uh, check always your osmolarity. If less than 100 milliosmol, this is a primary poly uh, polydepsia. If it is more, other causes of water excretion impairment. Uh, again, if the uh, urine sodium is less than 20 effective circulating volume depletion, this meaning if it is more than 40, you can sink in Cialis or renal failure or reset osmostat or diuretics or adrenal insufficiency or vomiting or osmotic diuretics. This is simplified or <clears throat> just important points. Estimating the sodium deficit is again this is the equation and this is exa example here. If you if the sodium is 130 and do you want to raise the sodium from 130 to 140, you can use these equations. You can give you the sodium deficit by multiplying 0 0.5 to 0 0.6, timing the body weight, timing the target sodium which you, you want to reach minus the actual sodium will give you the total amount of sodium which is required. You can divide it by 513, give you how many mils of hypertonic saline 3% you can use for your patient. Uh, use all those isotonic saline at first, uh, and especially in true volume depletion in patient taking diuretics and adrenal insufficiency. Water restriction only, and uh, you can depend on it as a first line in Cialis or in edematous state or in renal failure or in primary polydepsia. And I think uh, we can stop here. I, I, uh, I think one uh, case is uh, enough for you to uh, give a chance to other guest speakers for giving their lecture. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Samir. Uh, very nice and informative lecture. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Um, yes. Uh, hi, Dr. Samir. This is Amr Salam. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question about the Vaptans. If you have any idea what the advantage over the normal saline we can use and or hypertonic, what what would what it will help with with that one? Uh, really, uh, for um, uh, myself, I'm not using it, but it is uh, a more potent and they give you a rapid and fast effect. And maybe in some, in some, uh, in most of the case, maybe uh, may correct the hyponatremia rapidly. And so, in such situations, even you want to give uh, antidiuretic hormone to avoid the uh, pontine myelinolysis. But uh, normal saline is uh, a, a gradual, uh, give you uh, a gradual corrections for it. 
and the efficacy of Vectan is like urea. The, I think the same. It's the efficacy. But the Vectan and I say, I don't know if it is available here in our country or not available. Uh, for personally, I am not using it. Thank you very much, sir. Welcome. Mr. Sadi, we proceed.